What's going on? Jake here with Uncommon EDC, and today we're taking a look at the weirdest knives that I own. And I have a lot of weird knives, so I wanted to keep this video on the shorter side. Gonna limit myself to only seven knives, and this video we're gonna focus on function, so knives that we interact with in a weird way. This may be a whole series, stuff with forms, weird shaped knives, weird finished knives, and some other categories I have in mind in the future if this video does well. But for this one, we're focused solely on just kind of weird ways that we interact with these knives. So up first, we have the STS Tactical Gas Station Knife. And called the Gas Station Knife because this used to be an old promotional item that they would hand out at gas stations, mechanics, body shops, that sort of thing. You'd see all kinds of different advertisements on the side of here as I drop it. And this is not a unique design to them, just something that they borrowed and would love to find some with cool vintage advertisements in the future. These are also typically pretty inexpensive. So this was around $10. I know Rough Rider makes a version called the Zipper Knife that's $7.99, I wanna say. And so typically inexpensive. I don't know if there's ever been a premium one of these made. If there is, let me know in the comments. I'd love to check one out. But the way this works is, Basically what the Rough Rider name implies that zipper, there's this piece of plastic on the back that basically acts as a zipper. In the open or closed position, it snaps shut, but you can just get your nail under there, pull that out, and once you do, you use this plastic lever as a zipper to retract and deploy that blade. Once you're ready to lock it in the open and closed position, you just snap that back into place and you're ready to go. Now, not the greatest lockup. It's not gonna close on you, but you have a lot of up and down blade play side to side blade play. But again, these are pretty inexpensive knives that they intended to just give out as promotional items. So they're not spending a whole lot on them. This is made in China. You can see right there on the zipper itself. And so I think these are pretty cool, but not gonna be your most functional knife. Still kind of a cool part of the collection that I like to show to people that have never seen one before. And so moving on from there, we have something completely different. We have the Camillus Mini Cuda. And this is a smaller version of the Cuda, which has a similar track here on the scales, but a different shape. That one's more like a check mark where you can see this one's a semicircle. And this is basically your thumb stud in that track. It's just on the track. And so it works a little bit differently. That does make it so you can kind of fidget with this a little bit differently. When it's not locked, you can push that forward and backwards on that track. But this one has a loose enough action where you can really just send this flying. There's some traction on that thumb disc to get you started and just push it along the path quickly. It will fly out of there. And so actually a super fun and fidgety knife. Another really affordable one. This has also been around for a very long time. I think probably upwards of 20 years with this model and you can get them for right around the $20 price point. It's a liner lock outside of the deployment. So just a normal liner lock. It's just the deployment that's a little bit different on that one. But from there, we're gonna go completely different. This one's not unique in its deployment. This is the CRKT Rekiri. And from the surface, it looks kind of like a normal knife, albeit an ugly knife, but it's a flipper deployment. Nice Warncliffe blade on there and super aggressive looking, kind of uncomfortable in the hand. It's got a weirdly placed pocket clip. But I really picked this one up for the field strip technology. And so what that means is that you can fully disassemble and reassemble this knife without any tools, which I'm gonna do here. On the back corner here, there's this wheel with some paddles on it that you can just unwind to unscrew that portion of it. That's the only body screw that is on there. Once you get it somewhat loosened, you can also flip the switch up here by the pivot to break that connection. And I think we're already loose a little bit more there we go and so we can pop that scale right off you see the blades removable there is a washer in here so got to be careful not to lose that but you can clean it up get it all ready to go and then put it right back together so i don't disassemble my knives in the field all that often but it's a cool just kind of neat way to do so and if you are someone who's constantly disassembling and reassembling your knife might be a cool knife to get now they make some better looking versions of this so this is not the only version out there in order to put it back together you just do the exact reverse usually you're gonna have to get started on screwing that back corner in before you flip the pivot switch and one thing I've noticed and I think got mentioned in my video for this one is this switch can be kind of difficult to fully switch 
when you're reassembling it, but what I've noticed is that if you make sure to put some pressure on the pivot and then deploy the blade just a little bit, make sure you don't get that tip. You can even tape it off if you feel safer, but if you deploy it just a little bit, it should just snap right into place as you can see. And now I can finish tightening that up on the back and we're ready to go again. So full assembly and disassembly pretty easily in about a minute. Obviously you're gonna have it apart longer than that to clean it up, but the assembly and disassembly process is very simple and easy to get get down once you do it the first time. So that's number three. Number four is one that's maybe not as uncommon nowadays because of this model, the Riot XL. And so this is a gravity knife. I feel like before this model came out, I had never seen a gravity knife. And I think the reason a lot of manufacturers weren't making premium gravity knives is these are illegal in so many places that they didn't think it would be financially viable to mass produce something that most people can't buy. Turns out it's extremely popular. Most places you're allowed to own them, just not carry them, including California where I live. And so definitely an interesting thing. The way it operates, there's the pivot on the back here with this peg being locked into place by the frame. And when you drop that down with that pivot, it's no longer locked into place. It can just slide freely and you can close it to lock it up. Now, it is nice and locked up there. Your hand is what's keeping it locked up and not that much play compared to like our zipper knife, for example, even though it has a similar functionality. This one's double illegal where I live because of that double edge. We're only allowed to have single edge blades in terms of carry, but still a really nifty knife. They've done a lot of iterations. This original one did not have a lock on it. They have locks on them now. They have the mini as well as the utility blade version. But I think this still deserves a spot on the list because prior to this model dropping, I had never actually seen a commercial gravity knife before. And so from there, we're gonna go to another weird deployment, the CRKT Provoke. Now, this is the original version. There's an EDC version as well now. So this is a more tactical of the two. Really just weird looking right off the start. But if you put some pressure on the back of this hinge here, that blade comes flying out and they call it the, their kinematic morphing karambit. Now this has been copied, you see copycats of this all the time from Chinese makers on Etsy, on Alibaba and that sort of thing. You also see utility blades that copied this design, but at the time this came out, I had never seen anything like it. They do have a copyright on it, but of course that doesn't stop people from copying them, unfortunately. Now the EDC one has a straight, I believe drop point blade. I've checked that one out before as well. This one's that karambit blade, so definitely gonna be more on the tactical side. But fun to mess around with, definitely a intimidating deployment method, just kind of snaps out of there and is ready to go. But not the most practical in terms of carry. In fact, I find the blade a little bit too exposed for my comfort zone to carry this in my pocket, but it's still a cool knife to have in the collection. Also has a pretty unique pocket clip with this ring shaped pocket clip, put pressure on the back and that raises that up so you can just slide it right in your pocket. But again, not something I'm really carrying. I think someone does make a Kydex sheath for this that might be a little bit more practical for carrying it, but I'm not really using my knives for fighting or I'm definitely not using my knives for fighting. And so not something I'm really looking into, but I still think it's such a neat design overall. Now this next one may not be so obvious how you deploy it. This is the Cobra Tech Viper. And you can see no thumb stud, no flipper tabs, can't pinch and pull or anything like that. And so how do you deploy this one? And this is not unique to them either. You see this on a lot of knives that like swap meets and stuff. Protec has a really premium version of it called the Magic Whiskers and the Magic Whiskers 2. But up here on the bolster, you see this textured pattern is kind of like your handgun grip, that diamond shaped pattern. And you just press your thumb onto there, slide it to the right and it will come flying out. So this is an automatic knife. And that's also acting as our locking mechanism. And so really nifty, kind of a cool way to get into that hidden release at a somewhat discounted price. I think these are probably 60 or 70 bucks, something like that, versus the ProTech version, which is a couple hundred dollars. And so a very interesting version. They also make a traditional style of this knife with the same thing, the bolster acting as your hidden release. This is definitely a fun one. And pretty cool. I found this one locally, so I was able to try it out and was pretty impressed with the action. Like I said, it's basically your discount version of that whiskers from ProTech. Now, last on the list, we have the Fox Radius. And this is gonna look a lot like our Camillus Mini Cuda, but it functions quite differently. And so although we still have the same semicircle radius path here, the thumb stud on this one's actually a button. So putting pressure just on that doesn't move it whatsoever. You actually have to press that in and roll it across the paths. And so it's a different type of fidget for sure. There's no just sending it flying out of there by flicking 
pushing it, pushing the button and flicking it, you can get that movement kind of, but it's also acting as your lock. So where our other one was a liner lock, this same button is acting as our lock here. So I guess it's a button lock. I don't really know what they describe it as. I'm sure they have their own kind of copyrighted name for that, but definitely a fun one to fidget with. It feels a lot different than that Camillus Mini Cuda, even though they look so similar. This is the JG10 version, which is probably their budget version of it. These were probably a hundred and something dollars. I don't remember, it's been a while, but eh, M390, maybe it was a little bit more, but they do have some very premium versions of these as well with titanium and magna cut and things like that, where they can get pretty pricey. And so I've seen some in the few hundred dollar range as well, but I think this is a really cool knife. Last one on our list for today's. Let me know which of these was your favorite down in the comments and what other type of weird knife videos you have you would like to see in the future. Like I said, I probably have four other categories in mind for future videos, but would definitely be open to adding some categories to that because these are some of my favorite knives to collect. They're just weird, even if they're not as functional as some of the knives in my collection. I just like having weird stuff, weird versions of things. And so I enjoy these type of things. Let me know what your weirdest knife is down in the comments below and maybe that'll spark some inspiration for some of these future videos as well. But thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking, commenting, subscribing, or joining the channel as a member. And as always, I hope you have a great one. Take care.